Another fine day outside. Whoa! Gale force winds. Shut that door. Everything in here looks alright, everything looks dry. Did a bit of a bodge down well on the outside yesterday. Still a very tiny seep of water coming in, but we'll deal with that when the weather stops. Other than that, no disasters, which is good for today. Oh well. So everything else arrives for this, uh, three o'clock this afternoon. So in readiness, we are filter making today. So I've forgotten how many times I've done this on the various ponds I've had. I like the chop and change, you know me. But yeah, so it's just gonna be a two stage or double height um, shower. And uh, yeah, I'll show you that as we're going along. Just a quick shout out to the guys. So yesterday, bless their hearts, they're shut. But they very kindly delivered my stuff to my door which was very very kind of them and has really bailed me out so Bob and Tony thank you very very much absolute fantastic company if you haven't checked them out do so Facebook and on the interwebs and uh, yeah I'm very lucky to have such a, a good local dealer showed you when they delivered in my opinion this is my opinion value for money wise for doing your own filters. You cannot beat the BAM recycle boxes. They are solid as a rock for this one. So the first thing we need to be doing is we're gonna do some drilling. So get the worst job out of the way. Let's drill in the hundreds of little holes that needs to go in here. Um, a tedious task, but an important one. So I'm gonna do that now and uh, I'll show you what that looks like after. Don't expect it to be too tidy. I'm not in the mood for putting lots of effort in. So that's done, no science to it whatsoever. I did draw some lines, but didn't even keep into them. Like I say, it's just holes in a box. What more can you say? 10 mil bit. These are freezing cold. The only thing I would say is, I mean, these don't shatter, thankfully, but if you've got a slightly uh, more brittle box, it's worth sticking it on the rad or something just before warm it up a bit. You're gonna reduce that um, chance of, of splitting and cracking. So just got a few to defer. Bit of sandpaper, job's a good one. Next up, tank connectors to get the water out. So these obviously just, uh, these are Cockney coils. These are only a few quid each. Um, just handy, I've got some washers uh, laying around somewhere in this chaotic mess. Uh, so yeah, just gonna pilot a uh, small hole, drill out, bore out the big hole, and then they'll slot in there again. Nothing too precise, I've just marked the line where I want them. 80 mil in, and that's where my centers will be, so roughly there and there. Actually, I might do that a bit closer, it don't look right, does it? Either way, I'll be back in a minute. There we go, so that's tank connectors fitted. And then inside, I've just started putting I've got a couple of these. First drop of water in there, shame it's from the roof. Um, yeah, got to stick the other one in, got to find it. it's in that box somewhere. Oh, another drip of water. Golly. Uh, you don't have to, but I put a bit of CT1 on these. No other reason than, as I just like to be sure. But that, with the lid, just got to sand those bits off when I screw the other holes in the other one. But other than that, that's that one done. Just got to put a couple of returns on here, just a couple of 90 degrees. And we're, uh, we're at with Larry. Slightly different drilling for this one. So again, just a cockney coil bit. What I'm using is the solvent weld step tails. Obviously cut down 38 mil for the pipe size. So this will sit in here. Thread will go on the inside. And I'll tell you why the thread goes on the inside. It means that we can pull the whole thing out should we ever need to do it the other way around. Um, and obviously you can't then pull it through because it pulls the pipe work and the hose tail through. Um, but yeah, or is it the other way around? Don't know, just double check, I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, hose tail's been cut down to take the size pipe that I want. I'm literally just gonna plop this in there with a bit of glue uh, and everybody will be happy. Here we go, hose tail on, Fred on the inside. Oh, Fred, my mate Fred on the inside. Just drilled the bottom of this one out. With these, 
the WAM boxes, most boxes actually, you've got the trough around the outside, um, to keep water from over spilling on the next one. I tend to only drill in between the grooves. What I will say is put a couple in because that will stop any build up of crap in these troughs, grooves, whatever you want to call them. So just done that. I've had to bodge this together actually. I've had to make an end stop end. Uh, I haven't got another tank connector or an actual proper stop end, which is annoying. I completely forgot. You know, it's got a slight kink on this pipe, just heated that up. It is smooth on the inside. Um, with these boxes, obviously they are tapered. I could space out with a rubber washer on one side to even that up, but it's just as easy quickly to heat the pipe. That means that will come in and go straight across the top. But yeah, just going to wait for this dry. I'm going to have a cup of tea, give us a bit of time. Um, it's had a bit of wet and dry, so those interested, this is the solvent I use. Um, I have moaned about it in the past. But I've moaned about it because it's actually very good. It goes off. Oh, do you remember I said it's medium bodied? It's like a fine winder. Where it says extremely fast setting, take note of that because it is extremely fast setting. If you're going to use this on a bottom drain on your four inch and that, make sure you're um, you're putting it all together before putting it in the ground. Trying to use this in the ground is an absolute bull lake. Uh, what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to bring the tempest in, get that up on a worktop. This can all dry. But in terms of being done, it's done. I've just got to put a couple of feet on the bottom. For those feet out of interest, all I use is the little lumber plate. I've got loads of them. The little black um, finger jigs. It just gives you a nice 10 mil gap. Let's the air in. Oh, there's another drip. There's one drip. And there's another drip. And there we go. That's that all done. Don't look hugely pretty. I want to pull these out because of where it's going to be sitting in the pond. Um, but yeah, I haven't glued these in, so I'll uh, make a decision on that. And the ends are only a push fit. But yeah, that's it, as simple as. Cheap and cheerful. The bits and pieces mostly I add. It's probably cost me about 30 quid all in all. Um, but yeah, fill it up with media. Get the alpha gro uh, jack mat in the top. And we get it on the pond. We are still waiting for the other bits at the moment, which is annoying. So what I'm going to move on to, as I said just a minute ago, is the Tempest. All right, just having a little assessment. Obviously, I want to use the solvent weld uh, depth hose towel. There you go. So these are my original pressure pipe fittings. And just having a look, I could take these off back to the original, heat up the original, pull out the um, the glued section inside, you won't be able to see that. Or, just having a look, I would then have to step, put a stepper on for the hose tail, an adapter. So what I'm thinking actually, this is very, very close in terms of fitting. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the little drum sander, handheld drum sander, and I'm actually gonna bore it out slightly. And that's gonna save me disturbing, these aren't the strongest valves as it is. Um, it's gonna save me disturbing that with heat. Um, I have done this one before and it's been okay, but once bitten, twice shy, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, get on with it. I don't like doing it. It's a pain in the ass, but needs must. All right, back out in the pond. So just putting some extra insulation on the inner sides. So this is just the twin back foil airlock insulation. Cheap and cheerful. It's about 15 quid a roll. Get sort of 10 15 meters on a roll, so it's actually really good stuff. It's what I've got in my filter shed, and if I go in there, I can feel the warmth on it. So it's obviously doing something, but uh, yeah, just tack to the edges, just going right round, and then a layer on the floor, and then over this will be um, will be the underlay. But the satisfying thing with this, isn't it? Look, just following the contour. Oh, so much fun! I'm not happy. One, I'm painting, which I don't like doing. And two, Mr. Prime didn't bring my order. So, despite rushing around to get ready for Prime order, I am now behind because I'm not gonna get the liner in today. So thank you, Mr. Amazon Prime. Bezos, 
dickhead. But in the meantime, I'll get to wax on, wax off, and calm down a bit. So I suppose it's not all bad. But yeah, so these are what I've done is just cut the the um, copings, if you like, timber copings. The tops, once the line has gone on, obviously these are pinned down. And now, uh, okay, so I've got the first one. I've got to paint that one, that's in place. That's slightly thicker, because this filter's gonna sit on it. And, uh, yeah. And then that's all I can do, really. I've got some more insulation to go in the bottom still, but I don't want to do that till the last minute. But for now, I'm going back to my painting and my absolutely disgraceful garage. Not done my air today, because I'm working. But look at this. Kid you not, putting something in the recycling bin, the wind blew, blew the cover, the lid back, cracked me straight in the old Swede. What a wally. <laughs> Evan's in uh, holiday mode still, look. It's uh, 12 o'clock, just having his breakfast. Lazy shit bag. But yeah, let's get on with some work. Oh, look at them all. Temperatures are coming back up now. Everyone's up for something to eat. It's nice to see them again, actually, but for the first time, in about a week, week and a half, although it's very windy, it's dry. Everywhere, you see where it's been windy, look, everything's had a move. Garden looking pretty drab. It's where the dogs land. One of the things I have got to do, actually, I might do that today, is get the bolts on the bottom of these, like the guy suggested. Stop them right now, but look! Look at this! 1st of January, look, they must know. Let's chuck them in some food and then we'll crack on for the day. Get those ones over there, a new home. It's been a while. It is wheat germ. Uh, everybody's having a feed. All right, just before a bloody duct tape stuck to my shoe. God damn. All right, there we go. So just before I go in with the underlay, I've just been taping up bits and pieces. It's not tidy, it's not gonna be seen. It is groundwork, it's not cookery, as we always say. Well, I haven't said for a while. But yeah, just tidied that up. I did try and make a penis with the tape, and then I thought that's childish and pathetic, so I stopped. So if you would have found that joke funny, sorry, it's not in there. Uh, yeah, so just taped up, same as on this side. Tapped any joints, insulation's got to go on this side, but I can do that after. So now we're going to go and get the underlay. Um, underlay, underlay! And uh, we'll start putting that in. What I'll do with the underlay, um, depending on how wide it is, and will obviously depend how I put it in. But uh, we shall have a look and we shall see what we have got. Kill me now. Right, that's the, uh, this isn't the liner, don't panic, this is just the underlay. What it's worth, I don't know. Look how thin it is. I've doubled up most places. Um, to start with, I was going perfection. And that's where I kept going wrong. So in the end, I just lashed it together and time the liner's in. Liner will be a bit easier to work with, <laughs> he says. Um, but yeah, for now, it's in there. And uh, we can now move on to the liner. But that was, because I've ordered a liner, because um ordering off Amazon to get it here too, well, yesterday. Um, the size liner I wanted, which was a three and a half by three and, what was it, three and a half by four, sorry. Didn't have it in stock. So for a 10 or a 15 quid more, I think what they did have in stock was like a six meter by four meter. So the line is way too big. Obviously the underlay matches, um, hence why it's been so hard. I've still got all that I left which I'll use for something, God knows what. But yeah, it's in, we can move on to the liner. I'm hot, I'm edgy and pit pissed off. That was, I don't like fiddly stuff. My wife's gone to do the horse with a daughter, but hopefully she'll be back soon to bail my ass out. Wife, hurry up and come home. So we bolt the liner indoors. So it's only an HDPE liner, I think, cheap and cheerful, but they are very strong. So this whole, this is six before, and it was 30 quid. So you can't go wrong with it, really. It's only the little quarantine, I'm not overcast. I did look at an EPDM, and it was 200 odd quid, or just under 200 quid. Um, so yeah, I bought it indoors to try and cut it down to size. As I said, 
I had to um, go over six before because it was always in stock. I only need sort of three and a half or four, whatever it was, three to four. So I bought it in here, there's a bit more room to cut it down, but um, I'm not enjoying this very much. My wife's still out, I need her back. Wife, come home, please. Right, I'm going to attempt, so we're in a better position now. Honestly, if you fit the liner on your own, it is a case of just manhandling. You're going to get pissed off, you're going to get frustrated. Those that do it loads and loads and loads, obviously it becomes easy. Um, I know a couple of mates of mine, they can have a liner in in a couple of minutes on their own without any troubles. But um, yeah, so what we're doing is working in the corners. The most important thing you want is hidden corners. So when I say hidden corners... It's going to be hard to see because the black's all going to amalgamate into each other. As you're going, you will find you're stripping off bits and pieces. That's only a good thing. You're heading in the right direction. Just be sure to always leave a, a decent amount over the edge. So if there is a little bit of a cock up. Oh, bloody balls my corner up now. There we go. Right. So you'll see I'm just working over from this corner into this one now. But when I say folds hidden, so if I pull this back... You could have your folds or your triangles on the inside, but what you do is, is the fold goes behind. So then once the water goes in, it's gonna put pressure on that fold and push it into that corner. So you then get a nice tight one. You're still gonna get a bit of shit build up in there. Um, you can get sealant tapes, double-sided tapes, um, but folded tightly, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Just make sure you keep an eye on them and just run the vac down there every now and then. Um, I'm half tempted to put a bit of CT1 on the inside, but again, it's getting it to stay and stick. But I'm just working into this corner now. So what you'll see, I don't know if you'll see it actually at all. It just looks like a load of fucking bin liners, doesn't it, at the moment. But what I'm gonna do is the fold. So this is the fold. It's actually gonna go behind. So when that's lifted up, there are me two ticks. But the fold, I'm pushing it behind, if that makes sense. So then when this stands up, Put that in the corner and that stands out it's not a very good example at the moment but that will pull tight once i've done it but i'll be showing you once it's all in um gives you a better view and then what we do is we'll put a foot of water in the bottom 30 centimeters of water that's then going to pull it tight and then we'll begin to fill it up only then will we fix the edges into place so just before i move on i'll just say and then so i've just pulled this back a bit and you can see that my fold so in theory, that could be in the pond, but we don't want it in the pond. So it actually sits behind the liner. And again, the pressure at water. So this would be roughly 1.6 tonne. So 1,600 kilos is going to be pushing against that. Um, and to be fair, it's irrelevant because the wall will fall down before the liner does anyway. So, uh, But yeah, so put your folds behind. So there's the front, that's inside the pond, and the corner is folded in on itself. Um, just so it's hidden but there is a good video on youtube there's a guy that does it with paper just to show you exactly what he's talking about yeah here we go right i think we've got somewhere so the corners will push out push out again so other than the creases again they'll push out so what we'll do is get a bit of water in the bottom same again in that one <laughs> Keeps thinking I see in holes. It's not it's where it's um been folded. I don't like this stuff, I've got to say. It's a bit frightening. But yeah. Oh I'm up with a cup of tea. Because I didn't enjoy that. Right, you join me back, back in the hole. Tell me what you notice. Yeah, that's right, we're back to underlay. Liner that I had all tidy and fitted. It's on the floor. One very stupid slip up. And this is why, don't rush, take your time, and don't leave standing knives on the edge. Literally, tried to get up. 
bit old now off my knees. We reached up to grab it, knife went in, about an inch slice, because it's HDP, it's only a cheap crappy liner. Spoke to a few friends, do a few specialists, very hard to repair. And to be honest with the concrete floor under here, I don't really want to take the chance because any water is going to end up in the garage. It's New Year's Day, so obviously there's no shops open. I am fucked. Right, after that complete fuck up, so I'm going to turn my attention to some of the finishing details. I was going to do them after everything was fitted, but may as well do them now because I can't get a liner till tomorrow because it's New Year's Day. So some of the liner, um, yeah, suddenly this has become um, free, this liner, so I can use it for other bits. So insulated behind there, this is the front of the pond. I've done the insulation. I'm going to add this, and what I've managed to find is a load of old timber. These were from an old futon, I think. So I'm just cutting them to length, and then I can use those on the front just to make it look pretty. So, I mean, it'll look pretty. It can't hold water, but it'll fucking look pretty. God damn. There we go, panelling on. It's gonna look nice once it's done. I'm just gonna stain that up now. Get it looking good and then I'm gonna call it a day because I am pissed off still. Goodbye. I'm glad that's over, but it does look nice. Gonna get my logo in the middle. Oh, but yeah. For an old futon slats, it's uh, pretty good. Once the top of that's on, it'd be lovely. Still boiling over the whole uh, liner issue, but uh, never mind. Never mind. On that depressing note, I'll leave it there. I'll see you on the next segment.